How's it going everybody? So one of my subscribers uh, asked me down in the comment section, how do I avoid worrying about health problems such as cancer, gut problems, uh, heart disease, stuff like that? You know, how can I be so confident that, I, that what I'm eating is uh, not setting me up for health problems down the way? Well, that's a great question because I actually struggled with um, hypochondria or uh, health anxiety for quite some time. And I've entirely conquered that, and I'll tell you how. So I don't worry about health problems anymore because I actually read scientific literature. Um, I used to watch so many lectures on health, right, from so many people, and I still do. Uh, I used to watch, you know, like stupid, like fitness YouTube or not fitness YouTubers, but like nutrition YouTubers, like vegan gains. I consider them a fitness YouTuber, or no, a nutrition YouTuber. Uh, I used to watch, you know, all, like, you know, people like Frank Tufano, a, a, a nutrition YouTuber. I don't do that as much anymore. I really, you have to take everything people say with a grain of salt. If you get all your health information from nutrition YouTubers who don't talk, who don't actually give you references or, or, or uh, things to research, then, um, you know, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Actually, fitness, uh, nutrition YouTubers are fine. Where people screw up is that they don't actually research the things that they're told, right? So you can watch people like me, watch people like Frank Tufano, watch people like Vegan Gaines. But if you just take everything they say um, as gospel, you're not going to get anywhere. And you'll probably run into health problems. Like, the fact is, you can't just believe what people say. Uh, I talk to health professionals every single day who claim, oh, I've seen thousands of studies that show dairy causes cancer, but then when you ask them to name one, they can't, and they start beating around the bush, and then they start to say that they don't even trust science because science is, uh, is manipulated by financial interests, and it's crazy. They can't name a study, but, you know, they'll say they read thousands of studies, so... Uh, medical doctors do the same thing and so it's really scary trying to figure out like what is gonna protect me from disease because everyone has a different opinion and no one reads research how do I eliminate this problem I'll tell you what I had to start doing look I wasted so much time listening to people's opinions health professionals opinions etc what I do now is I just read research Wow right fascinating the thing is, it's not as easy as it sounds. You have to know how to interpret research first. You have to know the, um, the differences between uh, population studies, uh, observational trials, cohort studies, um, dietary intervention trials, and um, you know large meta-analysis, which are really useless, okay? Then you have to understand um, what they can show or prove or, or what type of evidence they can, they can give you and what type they cannot. Like, what is the benefits of the data of whatever study type is being done? And this is the part where people also fuck up, is they think, oh, you know, this large population study shows LDL is, uh, causes increased risk of, or is an indication of heart disease. Or this meta-analysis, or this, you know, what people need to understand is for, you know, certain studies can show certain evidence. Nothing can actually prove anything. But the best thing you can do is use common sense and look at what works for people in the real world. For example, um, if you're scared of heart disease, look at the type of people that generally get heart disease. Are they fat? Are they overweight? What type of macronutrients and micronutrients uh, are they deficient in or do they eat the most of? You know, um, you look at a study that says, oh, like dairy causes um, heart disease or saturated fat causes heart disease. Then you look at the populations with, that eat the most saturated fat. What you need to look at is where is that saturated fat coming from? Is it coming from ice cream and pizza? Or is it coming from butter? <laughs> or, um, you know, they say, oh, red meat causes heart disease in population studies. And you look at, well, what are most people eating red meat? in the form of in these populations and then you look at and then you'll understand like a study can say red meat causes heart disease but in actuality the actual study is showing based on correlation that these people who are eating that red meat are eating other things that are causing heart disease and so you have to actually examine the evidence critically uh, yourself and you have to see 
what is actually going on with the data that is presented. You cannot just uh, look at the conclusions of studies and, and, and go based on the conclusions. You can't just look at the abstract. You've got to see how do they get that data. What, what co -found, confounding factors were, were taken into consideration. They could, they could control for uh, smoking, alcohol use, um, and, and exercise, but still be missing vital importance that people are, that people are not considering. Like how much sugar are you eating? Um, what type of fats are you eating? Are you deficient in omega-3 or vitamin D? Because <laughs> these all really change people's health outcomes. And these are things that are extremely variable. And most people are deficient in omega-3 and vitamin D and magnesium, especially amongst the average population, but even in healthy eaters, okay? And lots of studies don't, don't control for these variables, but you need to see what variables are so important. You need to read mechanistic data. You need to look at how people have reversed disease themselves. For example, there's people on ketogenic diets who have uh, gone from like a coronary artery calcium scan of 200 and they brought it down to zero uh, by switching to a ketogenic diet. They were on a, like they could have even been on like a Mediterranean diet. And then they went on a keto diet and they, dr they drastically lowered their, their coronary artery calcium, verified with tests. But then you have people on a vegan diet who've done the same. You have like the, uh, the Esselstein study or the Ornish study that's shown reversal of heart disease on a plant-based diet with statin drugs. Um, and so what I'm trying to say here is like people's opinions on health and disease, they're okay if you're getting a good source of information that brings you fresh ideas. Uh, outside the mainstream uh, and the more open-minded a person is the better a lot of times the better it is but it doesn't matter the point is like there that's a starting point reading a book is a starting point okay reading it doesn't matter what book you read dr. Greger's book or whatever looking at the actual science and the references and examining the the significance of the conclusions for example like for example um it might be true that like uh, eating processed sugar drastically increases your risk of heart disease but how significant is is that exactly like for example um if i eat if i drink a soda like once a week how like am i going to develop heart disease or diabetes from one soda a week even over the long term. And what about exercise? Will that augment that? So there are a lot of things that completely like destroy, um, you know, chances of getting a disease from certain uh, like foods and things. And so, so the thing is you've got to under, you got to really understand how the body works. That's all. But if you believe, oh, like a raw vegan diet is, is going to transcend me to the other world, there's no hope for you. Like, you're just so far lost, like, yeah. Or like, oh, like, um, alkalinity will prevent all diseases. Not knowing how alkalinity actually works, uh, stripping down minerals from the uh, bone in order to remain, to keep a constant pH, which is still bad, by the way. Um, or like, oh, like ketogenic diets, like they build acidity in the blood and cause kidney stones without actually reading that. Um, or like, oh, the, the lemon juice cleanse or whatever. Uh, anecdotes, read a lot of anecdotes to see what works in the real world, but then read science to figure out why are they getting those results? Like these people that are avoiding vegetables, they probably have, um, they don't have the gut bacteria. Maybe it was killed off by antibiotic use to digest these foods. And so now they have to figure out how to build up their tolerance again by building the gut flora or just say fuck it because people live on nothing but meat for decades and don't have health problems. So if you can live with that, then that's cool. Or you could just suffer and cry. So that's the beginning. I'll make more videos on, on, on how I, like, how I solved my hypochondria and why I don't care too much about that type of nonsense anymore. Like why, how I'm so confident in what I'm doing. Uh, cause there's a lot to it and I love this topic, so.